and welcome to the Bridging Borders Project. I'm your host, Hannah Handel, and we bring you Prime Ministers, Presidents, and other world leaders to share their COVID-19 response plans directly with you. Today, we're honored to be joined by Prime Minister Gaston Brown of Antigua and Barbuda. Prime Minister, we wanted to ask you first about your experience in crisis management. So in 2017, Hurricane Irma hit uh, Barbuda and killed and hurt 95% of the infrastructure on the island. We wanted to ask you, how has this response, where you were able to get away with only one casualty, informed your response to the coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, I'll start by stating here that um, it was miraculous that we only had a single fatality. And what would have helped is the fact that we had adequate um, preparations prior to the hurricane. Myself and others, we traveled to Barbuda and we insisted that the residents should uh, secure the properties. Uh, we cleared a number of clogged dam um, waterways to prevent flooding, cleared utility lines, as well as um, uh, those that had um, overhanging um, trees. So in essence, we were able to protect um, life and to protect limb through adequate preparation. But we found that the success in terms of our response was due to quick, firm, and thoughtful action. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, after several hours that we had not heard from the residents in Barbuda, I actually took a helicopter over and recognized that the island was um, devastated. And then quick action was taken to you know, reduce any further human tragedy. In fact, Barbuda at the time was um, literally threatened by another category four storm, and uh, we had to evacuate the island quickly. So we were able to manage um, that program by being very responsive, by literally managing our resources carefully, um, calling upon not only domestic resources, but external resources. So we went as far as um, Venezuela to get um, two military aircraft to help with the evacuation. We even utilize um, a barge, a sand barge to move people. So again, you know, managing resources and spurring quickly into action and um, taking firm decisions to evacuate people uh, would have helped. And, um, you know, as a leader, you know, in many instances, sometimes you're acting in the best interest of people and they try to resist what you're doing. In that particular case, we're very decisive and we literally evacuated every single person from Barbuda um, within a 24-hour period. Wow, that's a monumental feat to accomplish domestically. Mr. Prime Minister, I wanted to ask, as climate change increases the prevalence of these events, what are you doing to make sure that the international community complies to reduce their carbon emissions so that you can keep your people safe? Well, there's no doubt that um, climate change would have um, resulted in um, increased emissions and more frequent, more powerful storms. And we have been literally, you know, the victims of these more frequent and more powerful storms. So you'd know that, um, you know, for many years, the Caribbean region, including Antigua and Barbuda, we have been advocating uh, within the international forum for large emitters to reduce the emissions. We have done so since 1989, uh, during a, a forum with the SIDS, that is small island states, in which we would have um, participated in the development of the United Nations um, Framework Convention on Climate Change. Mm. And we continue to advocate within the international forum annually, especially within the United um, Nations, to ask these countries to you know, cooperate in reducing the billions of tons of carbon dioxide and, you know, other unwanted um, particulate matter that they continue to emit in the world's um, atmosphere, literally using our skies as a garbage dump. And um, clearly, uh, this type of um, behavior is um, threatening our existence, and we will continue to do so. I mean, we are signatories to the Paris Agreement, and we will continue to utilize the United Nations as a, an international platform to remonstrate against this injustice, which evidently has been hurting countries here in the Caribbean. Now, ultimately, Prime, Prime Minister. ultimately, we want to make sure that we, you know, uh, get these countries to reduce emissions, to make the planet a safer place, and to, let's say, um, protect human civilization. Prime Minister, we wanted to move to the coronavirus pandemic in your country. 
can you give me a little bit of information about the situation there right now? We wanted to know the number of people who have been infected, the number of deaths, as well as those people who have recovered. Right. So uh, we actually had our first um, coronavirus um, case on March 11th. And uh, since then, we have had 82 confirmed cases, uh, 59 of which were imported. Uh, during the past two months, we would have um, reopened our country's borders and we'd have seen 59 new cases um, imported. Uh, to date, we have had three deaths as a result of um, corona. And those are three individuals who were extremely ill, critically ill prior to COVID. Uh, since then, uh, we have not had any fatalities. And the cases that we have now, we have 19 active cases. All the others would have um, recovered. And of those 19 active cases, uh, no one is hospitalized. They are practically asymptomatic. Uh, so, you know, we do not have any significant um, strain on our health um, resources at this time, our public health um, resources. We continue to manage the risk, um, you know, very well. And um, our health infrastructure would have been tested because we continue to import these cases uh, as a consequence of the flights that, um, that occur daily between Antigua Barbuda and the United States, Florida in particular, Miami. Uh, so again, you know, we've been able to control the, the, the actual transmission from those who travel to the island, the passengers, including returning nationals, we've been able to control the spread to the domestic community. And to date, we have no evidence of community spread. Now, speaking of international arrivals, you mentioned flights from Miami. Have you closed down the borders currently? Are you planning to reopen them? And if you do, what exactly is your plan, Minister? Well, we have um, reopened our borders uh, since June 1st. Uh, so we've been open for the last two months. And our policy is to balance lives and livelihoods. And uh, so far, as I said, even though we are importing all of these cases, uh, the key challenge is to control the spread of um, our transmission of COVID to the domestic population. And so far, we have been relatively successful in controlling um, the spread. I'm only aware that uh, about what six individuals who would have um, um, gotten COVID as a result of um, some form of transmission from those imported cases. And those six individuals were identified quickly and isolated. So to date, uh, we do not have any evidence of um, community spread. And the domestic transition would have been just about six individuals. Okay. Now, have you implemented contact tracing with those individuals who have come to the island with COVID? Um, Absolutely. Okay. In fact, we have a very robust uh, contact tracing um, program. Uh, I would say that we have perhaps one of the best um, contact tracing um, program within the Caribbean region and maybe anywhere in the world for that matter. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a unit, well, two units rather, and they literally go door to door. It's a small country, so getting around uh, is pretty easy. And uh, they also utilize the phones to monitor these individuals to make sure that they um, remain um, in their properties, uh, many of them are actually uh, quarantined in, uh, or isolated for that matter in um, secured facilities, including um, hotel properties, and some are actually quarantined at home. So the contact tracing team, they continue to monitor them to make sure that they do not um, violate the quarantine. And I have to say they've been doing a great job, and that is the primary reason why we have not seen any community spread to date. Incredible. Now, in terms of the economic situation on the island, tourism is a major sector of Antigua and Barbuda's economy. Now that global travel has been reduced, how do you plan to help the citizens who lost their livelihood during this time? Well, we've been assisting our people in many ways. Uh, from giving cash grants, we have at least uh, three programs that provide cash grants for the poor and vulnerable and for those who are displaced by um, COVID. We also provide weekly uh, food packages as well, uh, packages as well to those individuals. Because uh, we want to make sure that ultimately, you know, that there is no hunger and malnutrition within the country. And uh, in terms of electricity, we have reduced um, the cost of electricity by 25%. And in addition, 
you know, we have gotten all the banks to cooperate with um, borrowers. We have over 9,000 borrowers who are now receiving um, repayment moratoriums in the banks up to six months. We also um, waive all taxes and duties on food that is um, imported uh, by individuals to, you know, reduce the cost of living, to make it easier for them to um, purchase um, food items. Uh, we also introduced a loan guarantee scheme in order to support businesses that may be experiencing difficulties as a result of COVID. And um, again, we have an overall program in which we continue to protect the poor and vulnerable uh, government workers. The government is the largest um, employer on the island. Uh, we continue to maintain the employment of um, government workers. There has been no um, pay cuts, no layoffs, because we recognize that in many instances that, you know, government worker may be the single person working in a home. So we continue to pay the salaries and wages on time. Now, we wanted to ask you, how are you managing the coronavirus pandemic in relation to the broader Caribbean community? How are you keeping in touch with the other, the other leaders and how are you trying to joint manage this response? Right. So within um, CARICOM, we have been collaborating with each other. We have actually um, shared our own experience. Uh, for example, Antigua was the first country within the Caribbean region to have reopened its um, borders. So we've been able to share with our um, colleagues um, within the various um, CARICOM member states uh, some of the challenges that we have had and the successes, the protocols that we would have established. And um, we also have functional cooperation among CARICOM states in which we have common procurement. So we've been buying PPEs together and uh, even ventilators and other products to manage um, the COVID crisis. And um, in addition to that, you know, we have agreed, for example, to have a little travel bubble among ourselves. Uh, so there's a great level of cooperation, even in terms of testing, you have the um, 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 the, the CAFA, which is a regional facility that has been assisting the various countries um, with the testing of, um, of um, coronavirus um, patients to determine whether or not um, they're positive or negative. Uh, so again, there's a broad level of functional cooperation among Caribbean states. Okay. Now, in the United States, we recently faced protests against racial injustice we wanted to ask you, one of the previous governments of Antigua and Barbuda has called for reparations for descendants of slaves. How do you plan to call for this in the future? And how would you imagine it to work in the international community? Well, we have to continue to advocate, uh, you know, for some level of um, reparatory justice. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's inescapable, an inescapable fact that a lot of the wealth that um, was generated within the Caribbean was actually sent to North America and Europe mm -hmm. to build the infrastructure, build the universities, um, you know, um, establish um, strong, buoyant economies. And, um, you know, we were left poor and destitute. And we think that there should be some level of um, compensation uh, and I am one of the individuals who believe there should be some, perhaps maybe cash comp compensation. It could come in the form of maybe um, a tax, uh, you know, a small tax maybe on wealthy individuals. Mm -hmm. You know that 1% um, of the wealthiest people in the world, and they control a significant um, portion of global assets. So if a percentage of their wealth could be taxed, uh, that could be redist redistributed among these um countries that would have um, suffered the injustice of, um, of slavery and um, colonization, and not to give individuals money, but at least to help the governments to build capacity in various areas, to build institutions, to build universities, uh, to develop the infrastructure and so on, similar to what happened um, in those um, developed countries that benefited and were able to build their countries uh, from the profits associated with the transatlantic slave trade. Thank you for that thoughtful response. Now, lastly, before we close off, we wanted to ask you to give some advice to some of our listeners in the United States. As you know, the United States has the highest caseload of coronavirus. So what are some words of advice and encouragement that you give to our listeners? The key thing is personal responsibility and to be vigilant. Uh, we know that COVID is a serious infectious disease, which could actually result in um, you know, fatalities. So provided um, people um, remain personally responsible and to follow the health prot protocols, we are pretty confident that they should be able to um, at least protect themselves and we'll be able to 
contain the disease. Now, what we found here in Antigua and Barbuda is that wearing a mask and uh, following the other protocols include um, good hygiene, etiquette, and social distancing, they work. Those three, they work. Make no mistake about it. I see that there are many in the United States who are arguing whether or not they should wear a mask. I can say definitively that wearing a mask works and it is one of the best ways of um, not only protecting oneself, but to protect others. And I would strongly recommend to them that whenever they're outdoors, that they may want to consider wearing a mask to make sure that they socially distance as appropriate and to practice good hygiene etiquette at all times. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prime Minister Brown. It was so wonderful to get your take on how you're guiding Antigua and Barbuda through this pandemic, and we really appreciate you bringing your insights onto the show. And the mask, it works.